Promotional consideration paid for by the following. I really enjoy drinking soda with a straw, but I want one in metal that won't corrode. Yo, check this out. Here's a silver one. Wow, a silver straw. Where did you get that? At Blatos, Chula. Blatos has all kinds of helpful accessories. Need to break up oregano in the kitchen? Check out our oregano grinders. Blatos, we make daily habits fun. Shut up and sit down. False start. We got a belch. Never mind. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Shift. It's episode 396, which doesn't seem right. There's no way we can be that close to 400. Howard, you got to get on it right now. But this is the show. I forgot. 396. I'm your host. Okay. Why not? He just he lost it. One week gone, and it's over. It's over already. That's it. That's he's him. It's it's I'm so me. hard. You, it's so you, hard you. to do the show, guys. You know, I mean, it's, like. I haven't posted that up yet. We can't do that bit yet because that's not up yet. Oh, but of course, I am your host, your funky leader, the greatest man who's ever lived. It's me, it's Matt, and I am pumped for the show because we're back and we're here. And also here is the light bearer, light bringer, the light bearer, bringing the Beastmaster Thursday. It's Eric, and he's here to tell us how his two weeks have been. Hey, buddy, I know you've been doing some great stuff because I've been doing some great stuff too. What you been up to these past two weeks? Oh, gosh, golly, two weeks is way too hard to remember. I can tell you that for certain, for certain, but I did do a couple things. I went and saw it. Did I tell, you see, this is where it gets all crazy. I don't know. Did I tell everybody I saw Ghostbusters? I think I did. That was like before we went on break, wasn't it? I don't remember at all. I don't know. I saw Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. I thought it was pretty dang good. Had no expectations for it. If I already said this two weeks ago when we had an episode, I'm sorry. You know what? I don't know what you want from me. I don't remember what happens week to week, folks. Okay? My life is a blur. It's a puddle of mud. Like that band. Remember that band, Puddle of Mud? They did the intro song for Ace Combat 5, which was the best Ace Combat game ever made. And I, I watch the intro, and I hear that song, and I tear up thinking of my friends and their fighter jets. Oh, my God, Chopper. God bless. Puddle of Mud. I saw him concert. It was a really awkward concert. A buddy brought me there, you know, and, and then, like I got really bored and wanted to go, and we were both broke, couldn't afford nothing to eat. But he wanted to stay for the whole thing. But, you know me, I like my food and I like having something to drink. And so I was, like, getting kind of agitated that we were there with no options all day long. It was really fun and a great day. But saw him. Got to see Puddle Mud. So there's a little history for you. Anywho's Ghostbusters, good stuff. I feel like it's going in the right direction. I, I'm I'm back in it. You know, I've never been, like, a super fan. But I enjoy it for the most part. Cool beans on the Ghostbusters. Then, beyond that, what did I do? Oh, yes, I had a recital this last weekend with the children. They had their dance recitals, so like Saturday and Sunday we're going to their different shows because they had to split the shows due to the fact that there's different areas like the DeWitt, the, the, the Waverly schools, and then, oh, we don't have enough room because we had to go to a new venue, so we got to do two shows to make sure everybody can go. But since my daughters are in it, you know, we're going to both shows, so we did shows, shows, and then shows on Sunday, and... And uh, the poor wife, she got to be there like the entire day Saturday, the entire day Sunday, doing that whole shtick. So that was a time. And it was fun because my daughters are getting old enough to where they're actually good. And you can watch them actually do real dancing and stuff. And it's pretty neat. And they're actually getting to the, like, the production stuff. So it's it's just neat. It's cool. You know, because I've been doing they, They've been doing it since they were three years old. So I've watched a lot, a lot of dances that are just kids doing kid stuff. That are also great, yes, is what you're so saying, because they are. They do wonderful. such a good job. They're learning, wow, bring them it's, flowers. It's so you did it. We all laugh at their antics. It's great. Yes, that's what it what it is. Exactly, man. You had it right. Beyond that, I played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and of course, I'm a broken record. I've said it a billion times, but that's all I've played <sighs> because um, it's a game that never ends. And uh, you know why? Because I told Matt, what did I tell you, Matt? What did I tell you a couple days ago, Matt? I said, I'm at the end game, Matt. I got to just do this thing. We're going to go to the gold saucer for the last time, and then we're going to go to the ancients, you know, the whole shtick. Well, you know what I did? I went, let's do this. I got a hold of somebody that's part of a thing, and we did the thing, and we went and we're flying to the gold saucer, and then something else happens. And then another event happens. Then we go to the, the, another place. And then it goes, hey, Due to the rising events and uh, circumstances of everything, all new quests and events have opened up in every single city. So make sure you go back to everywhere you've ever been in this game because there's brand new quests to go on. Oh, 
and look at this weird treasure chest. What's this weird treasure chest? Hey, here's a whole nother adventure for you. You want to go on a whole nother adventure with lots of multiple stops and bosses? We just opened it up for you. It's got an ultimate accessory. You're going to want that. So you should probably go do all those too. Oh, and also, remember the gold saucer, which is where you're going? It's got even more events now. It's got more events for you to do. So when you go there, make sure you do all those events as well. I've got 89 hours and change in this game. It's not going to end. It's time to put in another 89, bro. Was, <laughs> get the... Oh, my God. This is the last game I played this year. That's it. What you play this year? Alan Wake 2 and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and, and about uh, one-third of uh, Like a Dragon. That, that was my game. That was my games of the year. I don't know. It's insane. I, I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love every bit of it, but it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because now I got another 20 hours at least to go through here. So I'm like, well, I guess we're going to buckle up, baby. We're going to do this, and we're going to have a blast doing it. Because it is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and we're never getting it again. This is the last time. I'll be dead before we ever experience it again. So I will enjoy it and have a great time with it. I can't really talk about it because it'll spoil it for you guys. But let me tell you, all the characters are still juicy. All the action's still freaking fantastic. The combat's great. Anything I get stuck on just requires a little bit of brain, a little bit of thought. You get past it. There's nothing that's just blockade of stupidity. So I'm in it to win it. And that's been just about it, except for two quick notes. Fallout show, Matt. I told you to watch it. You said I don't like shows. I'm probably not going to watch it. But I encourage you to because it's like watching a video game in action. It is so good. It's so loyal to the Fallout series that it's just stupid. It's insane. They really know what they're doing. And obviously Todd Howard was uh, an executive producer, so they had you know the brain power to keep it on par with the actual game itself, and they did just that. The characters are all lovable, hateable, whatever you want, but they're all there, and they all have an impact on you, which is awesome. When every single character I enjoy watching and seeing what they're up to, that's great, because sometimes that doesn't happen, but with this one, it sure does. So I won't go into details, but I will just tell you, if you enjoyed Fallout in any aspect at all, you need to go check out the Fallout show on Amazon Prime. Obviously, if you don't have Amazon Prime... I hear people can still like kind of watch. Can you watch it at all without Amazon Prime? Because some people say they got commercials, some people don't. So I'm I'm assuming there's some kind of extra bonus maybe you pay and you don't get any commercials for that? Yeah, there's a tier system now. Okay. Where like for two ninety nine more a month, you can not have commercials in your things. That's right. But I don't watch enough Prime stuff, so I don't. That just got introduced, didn't it? That's a new thing. Yeah. Okay. Because I wondered, because I've never had commercials in my life for Amazon Prime, but with this one, I was getting uh, two commercials before every show started. And That's like, why. What the hell's going on? Whatever. Don't care. It wasn't a big deal. It's literally like two minutes, and then the show plays all the way through. I can I can deal with that. It's when you do Crunchyroll style that I can't I can't handle. So with that Fallout, check it out. Fantastic. And last but not least, real short is Anime Spring has come. There's all new shows, returning shows. I'm in a, just a, a a deluge of happiness. I was in a stagnant sadness for the last two weeks because, of course, the previous season had ended and it was just two weeks of nothing. Me just looking at shows that were like my, you know, D-tier, C-tier, like, oh, I mean, maybe I'll watch this. Oh, this kind of sucks. So I, I've got to clear the list. And I don't know if you've ever done this, Matt, where you start to pick and you're just, you're just scavenging like a vulture. So now my timeline's got all these... Half watch shows, episode twos, episode one and a halfs, and I'm like, okay, we got to clear all this out and put all the new season in in the order of importance of what I want to watch and what's important to me, so that way it's up there and I don't forget it. You know, as week, you know, week to week to week to week to week to week. So I'm I'm in a good mood with that. I can't wait to see. Hell, tonight after I play some games, probably gonna watch a show or two. Can't wait, can't wait to see what's new and what I'm gonna watch. So good things cometh. What about you, Matt? So before we go back, we got to get back to the present because I screwed up the intro so bad I forgot to mention that we are the Blanket Boys. Oh, yeah. We're wearing our white T-shirts, and we have the exact same 13 <sighs> Sentinels Aegis Rim blanket on because we're, if, if it was on video, you'd be able to appreciate it. But it's just – it's wild. It's crazy. It was a great moment. And speaking of great moments, two weeks ago, back in the day, 
went and saw Moulin Rouge at the Wharton Center. I don't know anything about like the actual movie. I've never, I've seen maybe like 15 minutes of it in my whole life. So it went in totally blind like I always do for most things. And it was a great show. Just a fantastic show. The backdrops and like the, the scenery was incredible. They had so many layers of backdrops and lights and colors. It was wild. It was crazy. It was a ton of fun. Very funny. Obviously, if you know the end of the show, there's sad stuff at the end. But all the way through, laughing, having a great time. You know, live theater, it's my thing. That's what I love to do. Other thing I love to do is watch wrestling. WrestleMania was two weeks ago. Great shows. Two nights. Cody Rhodes finished the story. It's what it needed to be. And it just felt good, like a capstone to all the stuff that had been going on. And they said it a million times during those two nights. It's a new era, and it feels like it. Like, it feels right. Things are fun again. Not that there weren't any fun moments, but it just felt fun. Like, this is how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have some down stuff, but you're supposed to have very much good stuff. So, good times there. Again, two weeks ago, hey, it was the solar eclipse, man. I wasn't feeling good, so I got to see it and witness it. We, Mom and I had the eclipse glasses, got to get the whole family around. It's like, oh, man, cool, special moment. Fun. It's not, a, like, a big deal because we didn't get any totality around here, but... It got darker, it got cooler, and you got to see it, looking cool, had a lot of fun. After that, won't talk about it, because the week went to shit. And I feel like quarter end brain, because it was such a bad week that that feels like that was like a month ago, and anything that I did before that feels like two months ago. But at the end of that week, we did have a good time. I promised we'd have a good time, and we did. It was cabin time with the boys. The boys were buzzing. And like we always say, I, I love the cabin time because we just go and all we do is laugh. Like we've never had a bad time. There's never been like, oh man, he had too much and made a scene and it was crazy. No, we just sit around and drink and tell stories and just laugh. And it's just great. And I'll never forget the progressive shots as we were doing them. Hey, this is great. Oh, you don't like it? You don't really like it. You like it a little less than them. Second one, man, I really love this. Oh, you really don't like it. You hate it. You were feeling sick. Time for the next ones. Oh, it's just beautiful. A beautiful moment. I'll never forget it. I, I hope I never forget it because that's great. I don't remember too much else from the night, just drinking and laughing and telling stories. Yeah, there were a lot of stories. There were a lot of laughing. The best part about it was we went there and it was told we were going to have TV. There was going to be shows we could have in the background. That didn't happen. The winds blew, <laughs> so therefore direct TV apparently didn't work. Mm-hmm. Then I hooked up my PlayStation, thought, all right, I'll connect to the internet, because they said there's internet. Well, apparently there was an internet, couldn't connect. So even with no modern happiness, you know, of having background noise, except for literally the video game title screens yes. of games that I would put on periodically throughout the evening. Yeah. That's all we had. And we're just over there gamming and gumming, blah, 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 blah. Topic after topic, conversation after conversation, making fun of each other on different spots and subjects. A lot of fun. Always a great time. It's definitely one of those things you don't want to overdo, but you want to make sure you do. Oh, yeah. So get that fine balance. Get your homeboys, homegirls out there and do something like that every now and again because it's nothing but fun. Yeah, like you said, we couldn't do it every week because we'd be like, all right, man, what are we going to talk about now? Fallout show again? No. Okay. What have you been up to this week? Nothing. Okay. But it was just, it was a perfect encapsulation. Was, we're all here. Boom, boom, boom. Story, story, stories. Laughs, laughs, laughs. Drinks, drinks, drinks. And then just crash, wake up, eat delicious breakfast burritos. Mine was freaking amazing. I went, man, mm-hmm. I can never make breakfast burritos that taste like this at home, even though I you do all the same things, have all the same ingredients. It's just good food. It's just good time with the boys. After that, it was Tuesday of this week, went out to the Wharton Center again, saw Catherine Russell, who is an older jazz singer, and she did like classic stuff with a modern spin on it, of course, but jazz and blues from like the 30s and 40s, kind of remixed in a more modern style, was great. I was moving, I was grooving the whole time, got out and I was like, damn, I've never heard of this lady before, because it's just, hey, there's jazz at the Wharton Center, I'm going, that's what I do. I went, man, she's awesome. Let me go get, because she's got like four CDs at the table and like two vinyls. I'm like, let me go get some CDs. I walked out. Literally every single human had the exact same idea. And I went, I can't wait for two hours in this line because I'm going to go, oh, what do I want this CD? Or do I want that CD? Oh, what, was, what about the third CD? And I would lose my mind. But a fantastic show. Like it, 
completely revitalized me from all the bad stuff that had been happening. Obviously, the cabin did too, but it was just like, you know me, live live music, live shows. And I was like, this is awesome and amazing. And so many songs were just hitting. Some were really funny, which is surprising because like they were old songs, but they were still funny today. Just a great show. Awesome show. Then on the video game front, got in some streams of Persona 3 Reload. Oh, Every time I get in that game, I go, man, I need to play this nonstop, or at least just have the music nonstop. And I go to my phone every single time, and I go, all right, iTunes Store, you have to have the full thing now. And it goes, no, this is a soundtrack that's coming soon. You can listen to like four songs off of it, though. I'm like, that's not enough. I need this to like be my day. When people leave from work and I, I stay the extra half hour or hour later than they do, I need to be able to put in one earbud and be in Persona 3. So get on it, Apple Store, Apple Music, Atlas, whatever it is. Do that. Also been playing some Unicorn Overlord, getting back into that, and it's just wonderful. I've just finished up Drake and Hold, like the big story there, going to Elheim. Got so many units, so many tactics and abilities, having such a great time in that game. Same thing with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I play it every day, because now there are dailies and a daily bonus. And when you bought the Deluxe Edition, you get one Battle Pass token. So I redeemed it for this first battle pass. You get three dailies to get more battle pass experience, and then it drops off after that. So you got to go in and do your dailies, man. And it's still so much fun. Zooming around as Joker, flying through the air with the greatest of ease, like I mentioned before. It's awesome. I love it. I don't care that I'm the only person in the entire world who enjoys this game. It's awesome, and I love it, and it's great. And I've been playing another game. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. You'll be surprised what I'm talking about, unless you looked in the description or something. But it's going to be cool. I'm going to tell you about it. Wee! He's going to tell you about it eventually, folks. But first, I'm going to tell you about a little game we've talked about extensively in the past because it's been resurrected just like the Phoenix. It's Final Fantasy 16: The Rising Tide. It is probably the final DLC, man. Probably. Probably. Because, of course, they talked to the director. The director said, I'll never say it's impossible to do another one, but we uh, we want to move on and do other stuff, and it costs a whole ton of money to do what we just did. So probably in. So we'll probably say it's in. So I know the answer to this because you said this is the final DLC. But the first one came out already? Like, I feel like yes. that just warped through. And, like, I know it happened. But, yeah, but it's it, already there. But you said it's happening next week, and then it went, <laughs> and then this one happened, and I went, that's the one we're talking about because time is a flat circle. Here's the best thing, though, because now you can just go experience both. Because yeah. from what I heard, the other one's a little bit lighter. There's not a whole bunch of extras going on. It's just another chunk of story for you. Not a lot of extra side quests, not a lot of extra nothing. This one, however, folks, you're going to find out what happened to Leviathan. All right? And now... Let me just preface this with, you do need an endgame save of Final Fantasy XVI to play this. If you do, you'll get in, and you're going to have a new little note, a little letter. It's going to say, hey, I need your help. This new individual is going to say, come over here and help me out. You're going, you, Clive, Joshua, Jill, you know, you're all going to go on your merry way, meet this new person. They're going to tell you, hey, there's this whole new area you don't even know about. It's called Mysidia, and uh, there's some people there that you don't even know about. You've never seen them. Wow, whoa, how did I miss this whole place? You did. Somehow you did. And you're going to go there and you're going to see a whole new group of people and you're going to learn all about what happened to Leviathan, et cetera, et cetera, and you're going to go try to save said Leviathan. On the way, there's going to be a whole bunch more new side quests according to the website. So you're going to get to experience all new quests, all new fun things to do besides just the main mission. They've got a whole new location and uh, experience called the Kairos Gate. So it's like these 20 battles they get progressively harder and harder, and there's, you know, yeah, Matt's already shaking. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh-huh. You know, and I'm mixed. I don't know. It might be fun. I might hate it. But you get rewards for each one. And then, of course, there's times. You can beat times on them and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So here's a whole new experience for you to go through to get really cool end game material, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, there's brand new weapons, all that good stuff, outfits, that kind of thing. And my favorite man, Tomberries. There's King Tomberry. There's Tomberries. You finally get them. And, of course, some other new enemy monsters that they promised, which I haven't seen yet. And, of course, returning monsters of different variants. So you're getting all sorts of cool stuff. A whole new character to come around with you. 
brand new uh, summon to eventually get a hold of. You'll get the powers immediately, much like you did throughout the questing of all the other FF16. It's very similar to that. You'll get the powers early on, but then you'll have to fight actual the summon, the Leviathan, as the main boss. And from what I hear, because I haven't touched it yet, obviously, Leviathan's like a long-range build, so you're over there shooting stuff, doing all sorts of collapsing water abilities, and that sounds right up my alley. I can't wait to just get a hold of that and integrate it with, like, uh, Garuda, and uh, I don't know who else yet, but for sure Garuda, just because I feel like that's going to be a really great pairing for what uh, Leviathan seems to be offering. Or a Bahamut. Because that that had like the little drones that also shoot. Oh, the drones! So yeah, doing yeah, that, yeah. and then this on top of it. Oh yeah. Oh man, the possibilities are going to be endless. It's going to be ridiculous. So I can't wait. You know, I, I the only reason I bring it up this week is because, like Matt just said, literally, the last one it came and we were excited, but it just went, Phew. and then I forgot until all of a sudden this one popped up. I went, holy crap! I didn't even play the last one. I want to play this. Oh man, this sucks. So I don't want anybody else that played FF16 and loved it to miss pretty much probably realistically the very last DLC and the meatiest of the two. But hey, you know what? Now you'll get both, so you're going to get a whole big chunk of awesome FF16 content. So if you liked Clive, you want Joshua and Jill, and you want to go see what happens with a whole new town, whole new environment, brand new summon, and I'll hint, because they did, so it's not a spoiler, that ain't it. There's more in there than just Leviathan. So prepare yourselves for another surprise if you go ahead and catch this one up, which I for sure will because I loved FF16. I just don't know when, but I got to figure it out. It's going to happen, and I want it to happen for you too. Speaking of things that can happen for you, you could have been cool like me and got this game that I've been playing for not like a week solid, but around a week-ish now. And I'm talking about a Uden Chronicle 100 Heroes, and I hear you out there going, Matt, dude, bro. That launches on the 23rd of April, developed by Rabbit and Bear Studios, published by 505 Games for Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox, PlayStation. It's also on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, you can get it for free. But you can't possibly play it before the release date. You can't be playing it before the 72-hour early access drop. If you kickstarted it, like 27 years ago when that first happened, I told, I think I mentioned it on the show before. It's, it was coming. It's in my hot little hands. I was going to have it here and waggle it in front of the air so Eric could see it, but I forgot to prep it. But I've been playing it. It's so weird because Kickstarters, you got the physical copy. The disc is in my PlayStation. I, I got it. But then they also put out instantly a press release. Hey, we're also going to have patches and stuff, so maybe don't play it before the 72-hour mark or you, you could corrupt your save and all this stuff. And I said, no, I'm risking it. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, there's no reviews out because it's not out. Because whatever embargo there is, it's not up yet. Like, you can go on Reddit and see somebody go, hey, I beat it and I had fun. That's about the best you're going to get. So all I can tell you is my impressions, how I've been playing it. You're jumping in. The world looks beautiful. And it's, it's kind of weird, though, because your characters are 2D sprites in this 3D world. But it's all... It feels like Dragon Quest to me, like that kind of like 3D environment. It's not super detailed, and it's not super cartoony, but it's just a nice mix between the two. The music's all been really good so far. It's got nice voice acting in the Japanese that I'm playing. But so far, it's a really simple story. It starts out really small. Your main character starts out, you've just joined up with the Watch, which is kind of like a mercenary group, and it's kind of vague what you guys do. Like, hey, you joined the Watch. Welcome. You're the new guy. Okay. Here's this other character who's been here for two days. Okay, let's go help out these two groups. And there's the Imperials, and then there's some other group, and they're working together, but they don't like each other. And you're starting to figure stuff out, and then it time cuts to like six months later. And now you're more officially part of the Watch, and you have to go around and collect members. That's like your first quest. Go around and collect some members. So you're doing the sweet coding thing, kind of, but it's, it's weird because there's no like overarching plot yet. Like, you've met another one of the main characters. you met the guy in blue, because you start out as the, as the black-haired kid. And so you, you've learned about each other, and then now, boop, time skip. Go meet up with a bunch of crazy characters. And I will say, the character designs, really nice. I really am liking them. I, you know, I've met maybe ten characters so far. Some of them, kind of stock, kind of boring. Hey, I'm a hunter, and I like kids and family, and I look like a generic hunter man. Okay, fine. But I met this other guy, he calls himself a Desperado, and he looks like a Japanese biker punk with his like big pink biker coat. And there's a little girl who rides on this big monster thing. One of the first characters I met 
is like a magical girl. And her voice acting is great. And her character sprite is cute. And her character portrait is just right on the money. And she's, I'm going to fight for love and justice. And there's a monster over there. And I'm going to go save that town. And you go, oh, man, she's running off into the bandit den. We got to go help her. Cool. Loving the story. Loving this character. Here, I'm going to get, she's going to be the first character I get. It's going to be awesome. Run over there. She joins up through the party. She's got magic. She's just a ton of fun to play as. Then you get into the boss fight. And Eric's heard me say this before. And she goes, all right, I've prepped this area with my magical grimoires. There's two of them. And they go up out of the ground in this like sand pit. And I'm like, oh, this is getting cool. Big magical books. And this big monster comes up. The monsters are all 3D too. So it's interesting between your 2D characters and the 3D monsters. I like the style. I like it. I like the battle system. It's pretty traditional, but it works. Like it feels right. And she goes, okay. Here's what that boss is going to do. He's going to go in the sand, and you got to pick one of the grimoires. And if you pick right, it's going to hit him. And your your character even goes, well, how am I supposed to pick? And she goes, I don't know. It's going to work, though. It's like a a fun moment. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And he comes up, and he goes down in the sand. First round of combat. Pick a grimoire. And I go, okay, Mm, left. He comes up on the left, It shoots out this magical hammer, goes bonk on his head, and it stuns him. And I go, sweet, cool. Next round of combat. I bet he's going to go to the right. I pick right, he comes up on the left. Okay, that's fine. Next round of combat. I pick right, he comes up on the left. I go, okay, I'm not going to be a dummy. I'm just going to pick, stay in one direction, because there's no tells, there's no nothing that I can figure out. There's not like, not like his audio goes from right to left while he's under the ground. Nothing that I can figure out anyway. Okay. I'm going to pick one. I'll get it 50% of the time. Pick right, he goes left. 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 Fine. Pick left, he goes right. And this whole time, if you don't hit him with the hammer and stun him, he hits you twice. And he doesn't hit super hard, but hitting twice is enough every single round. It takes like 20 rounds to down this guy. I'm mad. I'm so mad. By the end of it, I hit him twice out of like 20 rounds with the stupid hammer thing. But I beat him. I beat him. I used up a lot of healing items. I used some revive items, which I never liked to use. Whatever. I got him. I got her on the team. This is going to be cool. She's going to be jumping in all the story segments. Let's go do a story segment. What is cool, you do see the characters that you have with you, but only your core party usually interacts with what's going on. Occasionally, they do chime in. The side characters chime in, but they are mostly kind of lined up in the background. So it's cool, and when they do chime in, I do appreciate it, but it's not all the time. Then I went to another dungeon, and I told Eric this. It's a long dungeon. You're in like a mine. You're trying to find bandits, and the description you have of bandits is they have like black hair, they wear pink, and they wear hoods. So you go into this cave. You see three dudes go in a secret entrance. Uh... They don't have black hair. They're not wearing pink, and they're not wearing hoods. None of them. But you decide, let's chase them anyway. You go through this cave. It's like a 10-floor cave, like 10 separate screens, and each screen is long. You're going down all these little narrow tunnels and doing all this stuff. And you know me, Eric, and you know me, listeners. I don't skip fights. Every single screen I'm going through, I'm fighting enemies. Random encounters, which I got no problem with. Uh, You know, an old-school battle system, which I got no problem with. I'm fighting everything. I'm leveling up a lot. Cool. Awesome. Levels. I'm going to smoke the boss when I get to the end of this thing. Get to the end of the thing, fight the dudes. Okay, three dudes. All right, one's a shield guy, one's in the back. You can't really hit him unless you're using magic. One is a brawler dude up front. Okay, but the shield guy jumps around and covers everybody. Okay, focus on the shield guy. Here we go. Twelve turns later, now he's got his weakened stance. Five turns after that, he's finally down. Okay, time to fight up the brawler guy, because I still can't reach the dude in the back. Ten turns later, he activates a little gimmick in the stage where, like, a, a claw hammer comes down and grabs a rock and goes over your party and go, this is it. I move it back over to him. I'm going to do big damage. Ten turns later, he's in his weakened state. Five turns later, you get the idea. It was a long-ass boss fight. And, you know, I'm not dumb. Anytime my abilities come up, I'm popping abilities because you have MP, which is a consumable resource, and you have SP, which powers a lot of like physical skills, and you regenerate one to two to three per turn. So you can pop those off. Next turn, you're just doing regular attacks. But this is six party members focused on one character blasting it. 
15 turns, 20 turns. Eric's shaking his head. And, you know, I, I even went back to town. I upgraded everybody's equipment, everybody's weapons, everything. I did all my due diligence. It's a lot. Like, I don't know if I can deal with it. Like, it's not, it's not hard, but it just takes so, up so much time. And it's, I don't know. So I don't want to be negative Nancy, but five and a half hours in, because I went around and got every single character that I could. I did all their little quest lines. I fought everything on the way to everybody's quests. I don't run from battles. I don't do anything. Doing all that side stuff, then do the next story thing, and it takes forever. So I don't know. Some of those Reddit reviews that I've been seeing, hey, it took me about 60 hours to beat it, but I loved it. Loved every second of it. Loved everything about it. Maybe it's just me. Because even five and a half hours in, I'm not to like the story. I've gotten little bits and snips. of You see like a princess and her butler guy working with some Imperials. And she goes, mm, I don't like these guys. So you know something's about to happen. Maybe once it all comes down and you get the other third character in there, I don't know. But right now, I'm, it's not, I don't know. I don't want to say it's not for me just based on the intro. I don't know. The characters feel goofy and, and too light. But the battle system takes so long and the dungeons are so long that how can you have both? You need a long dungeon to make the battles easy at the end. But the dungeon is huge and the battles are long. They're not really hard, but they take so long. How am I going to get the crawl through and scratch to that 60 hours? So I'm going to say once the embargoes drop, watch some reviews, watch some gameplay, see if it's for you. Because even those positive reviews I've seen on Reddit, the you know the vague ones say it's very old school, but I love it, and I love old school too. But maybe this one's too old school for me. I don't know. Just there you go. There's my impressions. That's all I can do. That's all I can give you. And just check it out if you're interested. Watch some reviews, though. I'm telling you, you got to watch those reviews whenever they come out. So you're talking on, and all it does is remind me that there's another game I want to play that's an old school game that got redone that we both gushed about that we both were going to say we we're going to play, and that was the Star Ocean. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, you know, I'm like, man, from what you're saying, this sounds like it still could be a great game, maybe. But you know what I know is a great game was that I should probably go. Mm-hmm. I need to check that game out. But here we are, moving through time. I haven't checked it out yet. And I was thinking about it because it's been on like super sale on Walmarts lately oh, for yeah. like 20 bucks, And I go, mm-hmm. I need to just switch over and play that instead. But then I think of all the stuff that was in that Star Ocean game that made me stop playing because there was too much stuff in that. And I went, oh, I don't know. Am I going to – am I just going to – every new RPG, I just throw it out the window. I can't do it. Not, not for me. It's too hard. We don't got time for it. We just don't. <sighs> Just like we don't have time for most of the games that have probably been talked about in two separate shows, Matt. Two. Two over the last two weeks have come out. We've got the Triple I Initiative, which Ryan Peterson threw out at us over there. Let us know all about. So thank you to you because I would have never watched it otherwise. And I would have never watched it also if Matt hadn't reposted it later telling me to, you know, hey, remember the thing? (laughs) So there you go. A double whammy of, hey, Check out the damn show. And then, of course, the Nintendo Indie Showcase happened. And that was like, what, the other day, a day ago, two days ago? Two days ago, I think, yeah. Yeah. So that happened. Both of them happened. Let's just kick it off with the Nintendo Indie World, you know, whatever it is, Showcase, because I think that has a fewer games that we were interested in. And then we'll finalize it with some of the Triple I Initiative uh, happenstance. That sounds good. I'll I'll, I'll kick us off because obviously I'm the Indie guy. I'll have more things to say. I feel like Nintendo Indie World, I don't know if it started off with this. I pre- I'm pretty sure it did. No, it was it was a different game it started with. They but, started with the cat game. Yeah, but but pretty close to the front, they had a game called Refine Self, the personality test game. And now you hear that and you go, what are you talking about? But so many of the games in the Nintendo Indie World thing were so interesting just on the graphical style. And that's what popped me on this one. Because this looks like a Neo Geo Pocket Color game. Like... Not Game Boy graphics, not like Game Gear graphics, but like right in between. And like that big chunky pixels, but characters are made up of only a few pixels. Just the graphical style had me going, I need to play this because I missed out on that whole Neo Geo Pocket Color generation. And that's what this reminds me of. That other stuff like Sticky Business, Pixel Art Sticker Business Game. I'm not a business game. I don't care about stickers. I'm not an artist guy. But the Pixel Art looks so good. Like so many games were graphically just beautiful in this showcase. And I'm like, maybe I'll never play it. Maybe I'll never like buy it and put like a hundred hours into this. 
but I want to experience it. Like on this beautiful monitor, I want to see beautiful pixel art. I want to see that Neo Geo Pocket Color style. I don't know, two right off the bat pretty quick that I was just like, yeah, I'm writing these down. I'm at least going to remember them. I'm writing them down and putting a star next to them. For me, there's two that stick out. I'll just mention one right now because I'm sure you got a few more. And that's Europa. It was delayed again, but there's a brand new demo for Switch. I know that they announced was available as of now. So if you're listening to this, you can go check out this demo for Europa. And the reason I'm interested at all in this is for whatever reason, I think it's the coloring, the way the visuals, everything just looks and, and whatnot. It reminds me of Goemon for the Nintendo 64. I played the hell out of that game, and it just had that some about it. It just has that same fundamental feel to me, like this weird kind of open world, fluffy, random adventure, nothing serious. It just feels like you're just going to go tromping around, solving silly puzzles, doing silly things with silly people, but it's a, like a gorgeous fun vibrant world and i got that same feeling way back in the day when the n64 was the tits and everybody thought the graphics were great and everything was wonderful as i did when i watched this trailer for europa so this was one of the ones where i went huh this could be one of my indies this might this might just do the trick if it actually releases in time because of course it was delayed and uh what was it delayed to i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't see anything so I don't know when it was delayed to, but apparently it's been delayed, so I don't know when we're seeing this damn game. But you can play the demo and get a gist of it, at least, right now. I did not expect you to mention this one. That was one of the ones that got me super excited. Kind of in that same vein, I didn't put it together with Goemon, but I got to thinking of, like, it's not exactly the style, but it feels like a Studio Ghibli kind of movie yeah, kind of feel. Yeah. Kind of, like, brought to life, and like you said light and like you're flying and gliding around and like sliding on top of the water and going around this big open world and solving silly puzzles like you said but just seeing that little character in this kind of cutesy world but not too cutesy doing this fun traversal i was like it's another fun traversal open world game that's me that's what i love to do and having it be kind of low stakes having some puzzles having some fun time It immediately scratched all the itches and ticked all the boxes. Another game I didn't expect. Don't really know anything about the developers. It's a small team, obviously. It's like a guy and his wife. Stitch. That looked like Picross, but with, like, knitting. An interesting puzzle game because you'd have, like, this big circle, like a knitting hoop or whatever it's called. And you'd have to fill in areas by going through certain shapes and hitting certain things. If you think of what a Picross grid looks like and how that becomes a picture when you're done with it, That's what this reminded me of. Like, you're filling in colors, but by filling in the colors, you're also adding the shape to it. Really visually interesting. I mean, pixel art, but, like, really rich pixel art. A puzzle game that looked beautiful, that looked like nothing else. Yeah, and I lied. I said I only had two, but there was... I'll I'll mention this one because it mildly has my interest. It actually plays out in uh, the Triple I initiative as well, and that was Cat's Quest III. Mm Mm-hmm. It's got a bunch of rat pirates, all right, and you're this mystical cat. You wake up, you, you're given all these powers, or you have powers. I'm not really sure which way it goes. But then you go on this cool pirate adventure, and you're stopping the bad rat pirates from doing bad things with your own ship that you upgrade and do all sorts of fun stuff with. And it looks chaotic. It looks crazy. Once again, it's very colorful, very fluffy, very fun feeling. But it has, like, a nice, cool, fun, overarching map that I like, like the world map. And so you could just attack, obviously, other ships on the water. You can attack towns, the baddies that are in the towns. You're just blobbing cannonballs at them, doing damage. And that piqued my interest. I went, you know, this could be six hours, nine hours of a lot of just goofy fun, having a great time. It's nothing like Skies of Arcadia, but I dream of a day where I play a ship game again that gets my blood flowing and gets me excited like Skies of Arcadia did. And I'm like, maybe this will be a quick hit a little bit of fun so it did pique my interest i'm not sold i'm not definitively like oh, i'm on board 100 but that was one that i actually enjoyed watching and was mildly excited for yeah absolutely agree on that one now i'll give you a two pack of more mainstream games and then i have the one that just blew my socks off because i forgot about it and i thought it was something else but i'll get to that in a second first up anton blast this looks like Pizza Quest or like Sonic the Hedgehog. You're like an angry dude with a big old beard and you got a hammer or you can play as his wife and she's got like a big old mace and you're running through the world, smashing stuff, collecting stuff, and you're tearing through, you're busting out secrets and shortcuts to get to the end of the level. And when you get to the end of the level, 
you like blow up the level. So you have to run all the way back through two to escape from whatever it is that you set off. And I'm like, I love that because there was a stage in the messenger that did that. And I freaking loved it. And that this put me in mind of that. Plus the high speed and the busting stuff and blowing stuff up. Loved it. Another one I'm interested in, not sold. Got to see more. TMNT Splintered Fate. It looked like Hades, but with drop-in, drop-out co-op with the other turtles, because you're making roguelike type of runs, you're going back and improving your turtles at the base. Got to see more. It looked a little slow, but it piqued my interest. I'm going to remember that it's coming out and take a look at it later. Splintered Fate, which apparently came out a year ago for Apple devices. I had no idea. Didn't hear about that whatsoever. But it's going to be here now. You will get to play it, of course, on the Nintendo Switch. It's a four-player co-op game. And you got to go rescue Splinter. You're going to go through the streets, handling business, coming up against all your favorite baddies. You saw them in the trailer. You saw Bebop, Rocksteady. You saw the Flyman, Baxter Stockman. You saw, uh, God, who was it? There was a bunch of them. There was all sorts of The Lizard Man was there, the Gator dude. I saw, I think it was some panda or somebody in there. It was a whole bunch of characters from the expanded freaking universe of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I feel like I've played all these games throughout the years, so I have to play this one. I just have to, because I've, I've played them all, so why not? Why not continue that lineage and just make sure I've checked all the boxes, I've done all the TMNT stuff, just because. Nostalgia. And it looked good, don't get me wrong. It looked very uh, old school in the fact, well, they all do. You're just going in a one direction, basically, going across the screen, fighting enemies that pop up. The boss comes at the end of the stage. This looked very much like what's going to happen in this one as well. But it did look cool, and Michelangelo, you know, Donatello, all of them, look very, very cool, very signature, you know, moves going for them, all the stuff you'd want to see. That's all there. You know what to expect to see when you look at a TMNT game. And this seems to be checking the boxes. I can't believe you want to play this one, Eric. This is the one I just talked about. It's a roguelike, dude. You're not going to want to play it. I know, but You're but going to play it once and go, I died. I don't like it. But it's four-player co-op. <sighs> I don't like it. So if you're with me, Matt, I'll jump on your bank. Uh, yeah, yeah. Carry me through. <laughs> we have fun. Well, I have fun. You have some fun. And it was great. That's all that matters. <laughs> but the one that really popped me in this showcase, and I swear to God, when I wrote down the title, I, I was watching the trailer, and I went, this is it. This is the one. Hell yes. And the title came up, which is Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. And I went, didn't this come out like two years ago? Wasn't this like a pixel art game with like a girl with like big eyes or something? What the hell was that game that was like Gearbo a Gearbox publishing game? I'm not talking mm -hmm. about the case of Benedict Fox, but it was one that got revealed around the same time, like a two-pack. I don't know what that game was. I thought she had a flashlight in a mansion or something. Yeah, know. yeah, that's what it was. She would like shine the light around yeah, and see the, the demon things. Stuff. But this, oh, baby, it was like noir, 3D noir and like... Laurel, I had the laser eyes and people had like these maze faces and you're doing puzzles and solving mazes. And the only, the only downfall I would say in this one is it gave me PTSD because that graphical style made me think of, what was it? The 25th Ward, the silver case, that visual novel I played that was just brutal and disrespected your time so bad. I went, ah, oh, this looks so good, but I'm like I'm shaking, and I'm like, please don't be that. Please don't be the 25th Ward, the Golden Case. Oh, Lorelai and the Laser Eyes? Okay, I'm safe. Whew. Oh, it, they can't hurt me anymore. They can't hurt me anymore. So this one, it, it just it blew my socks off. Everything about the style, the puzzles, the maze, the the weirdness. Oh, baby, just check all the boxes. Write it up. Get it. Give it, give it to me. Put it in my veins. Right there. All sorts of good stuff from Nintendo Showcase. Gosh, bless it, man. So, of course, check that one out if you haven't already. Or just take what we said to you and go follow those particular games. Whatever floats your boat. But that's not all, because before that one, past, way past in the time, the previous week, was the Triple I Initiative. Now, where the hell did this come from? Apparently, there was a 2023 one. That would be news to me. And I've never seen this in my life. And mm -hmm. then even on the main website, it doesn't really say who who did it. You know, who who made this thing? But it was really good. It was really cool. I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. They got, you know, Epic, everybody uh, to participate, Twitch, all of them to, you know, throw in in the towel. And they, they showcased a whole bunch of indie games. I mean, they really brought it to the table in a quick, succinct, kind of fun fashion. It was just good. And I didn't expect it. To be honest with you, I was like, okay, it's going to be some really weird thing. But it was fun. It was easy. It was nice to watch. I was very surprised. 
Yeah, I expected to write down a few things, but I watched this after the Nintendo Indie World, and that one I wrote down, let's see, maybe like seven or eight things. This one I wrote down like 12. And I went, God, some of these games are freaking awesome. And because it had been a couple weeks, I had heard that, you know, the Slay the Spire 2 announcement happened. So I knew of some things that happened, but some of these things came out of like total left field. Never heard of them, never even thought about them. Boom, had to write them down. Stuff like Shadows of Doubt, Voxel, Film Noir, like detective action. You as the detective finding a dead body and like lifting up the blinds and seeing the bullet hole through the window, through the Voxel window. Not Minecraft style, but that Voxels. You know what I'm talking about, listeners. And that hard-boiled detective feeling. It just That trailer just popped me. You're talking about Vampire Survivors with a Contra DLC. And then immediately after that, they're showing off a game called Death Must Die, which is literally like Vampire Survivors, yes. but with Hades <laughs> too. And I'm like, here come the Vampire Survivors alikes and the Hades alikes, because I just saw Hades with Turtles. Here's Hades again. It's Hades likes and Vampire Survivors likes. It's crazy. It's nuts. Then, of course, on top of all that, they showcased Vampire Survivors coming to PlayStation, got all hyped, got, you know, getting people all hyped about it. Then they're like, guess what, though? We've also got a Contra collab going. So old boys come dropping down, and all of a sudden, instead of just seeing the vampires and the bats, etc., you're seeing all the mechanized and alien bugs from Contra coming. Guns are getting employed. It looked insane. And I went, I never got into the original, but maybe this is where I get in. But then I went, no, because one game that just blew my mind, it was like one of the first ones, was Kill Night. Mm Mm-hmm. It was like a bullet hell, except you're a knight going into the lower, not even hell. You're going below hell to the very castle of rah, craziness. And you go down there, and it's just got brutal music playing, blood and gore everywhere. Just these strange macrobe creatures just getting slaughtered by you. And you're just juking and jiving all these different bullets, all these different attacks. And I went, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to play this game. That was another one, because that isometric camera perspective, it was like... Hades the bullet hell, the Mm -hmm. the Hades the hell bullet hell. And I was like, that's another one. That's another one. But it looked so cool, like just the style of that trailer and the style of everything that was happening. I mean, you could see gameplay, but you couldn't like watch it, watch it, because it was just quick cuts, boom, zooming in, ducking out, all kinds of crazy action. I wrote that one down too. Another one I wrote down was Gestalt, Steam and Cinder. And when I... They showed it off. I'm like, oh, what's this? And then they showed the character walking. And I went, that's Symphony of the Night. And then they showed the characters talking side by side. And I went, that's Symphony of the Night. And it looked so cool. Like a steampunk western Symphony of the Night. You're fighting like these giant robot things, just like a Symphony of the Night giant ass boss. You know, the walking, the dashing, the moving, the the sword swing. It's literally the Symphony of the Night sword swing. But... I never had, like, the proper time into that game. So, like, seeing this in a cool steampunk western vibe with this cool steampunk western lady character, I went, this, I got to keep my eye on that because that looks freaking awesome. Yeah, there was another title that I was interested in because I'm in the exact same boat as you. Just always thought about playing this. In fact, not even think about it. I did download, like, the original back in the day and played it for, I don't know if I was on Game Pass or somewhere, but I did, played it for a few hours, just never quite grabbed me. But this one was looking sharp, and I went, well, maybe I got to get back into it. And another game that I don't, I still don't have a clue about, I saw the trailer and it just got me, it was Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. I went, oh, that just seems really cool. What the hell is it? The trailer, unfortunately, still didn't really give me a good idea of what I'm actually playing, but it looked looked gorgeous. So I was like, okay, well, this is an indie developer, and they're making a title that looks like this. You got me in, you know, just by the, we're trying to make a game that you don't see too often and showcasing like some really cool, you know, in-game, well, it wasn't in-game, it looked like more cinematics, but whatever. It just, I don't know, it had a vibe and felt cool to me. Not sure what the hell it's about, but I liked it and I want to pay attention, try to figure out what the hell it is. Speaking of a vibe that looks cool to you, I'm going to mention it. I'm never, I'm probably never going to play it because this is, in general, a game genre I don't play. Dino Lords. Medieval castle building, wage and warfare, but also you can ride dinosaurs. As soon as that Tyrannosaurus came busted through. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Like these giant castle blocks are raining off because it just exploded through the wall. I'm not a castle builder. I'm not, you know, an empire builder kind of a guy. But you put some dinosaurs in there, put it on sale, like, you know, on a steam sale, like a year later. 
I will buy and play this 100%. Another game that's kind of the same boat, where it's, it might be too big, it might be too small, I don't know. Broken Roads. I know we've seen trailers for this before. This is that, you're like, in the Australian outback, like, post-apocalypse. It looks like the Wasteland games. Like, it literally does, because all your characters have the rings underneath them. And it's, you know, CRPG dialogue choices in this weird, crazy, Western Australian outback post-apocalypse. I want to know more about it, because the Wasteland games, I played Wasteland 3 for, like, 10 hours, and then I realized it was too big, and I couldn't do it at the time. This gives me those exact same vibes. I want to experience this weird ass world, whatever kind of crazy stuff is going on in Australia at this post apocalypse, picking dialogue choices, having skills, building my characters, bringing that guy because he can talk to this person, and da, 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 all that kind of stuff. I'm hoping it's as cool as that, but I'm also hoping it's not because I don't have 300 hours to put into a game like that, but it looked awesome. You know what? You already mentioned Gestalt, all right? But I want to talk one more second on that one because it did trouble me. Well, not trouble me, trouble me in a good way. Was this game, they called it Metroidvania, which it was. You start off going on the screen and you got the, the, you know, the melee combat. But then in, in the next second later, you're in total Mega Man mode. You're shooting beams, weaponry all over the place. You got mechanized things going to town. And then the animations themselves, one second really had that Symphony of the Night vibe. But then the next second, they looked like they had the explosions straight out of Mega Man series. So just all in all, that particular title really got me going because it melds two games I love together. So definitely wanted to check that one out. I only got a handful more, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention Slay the Spire 2. They obviously started off with it. I told you guys I had heard about it, that it got announced. Going into early access, I think, in 2025. I can't say it enough times, even though I've said it to you guys a million times. That's a game I had to force myself to delete off my console, the original one, or I would have played it forever all the time, forever. So to see a sequel coming, which means more new classes, more new abilities, more new ways to influence your character, influence your deck, even if it's just the same thing with new characters, I would be all over it. But I know it's going to be more. It's got to be more. I'm sad that it goes into early access first because I'm going to want to do it, but I'm not I'm not going to because I'm not an early access guy. But if I didn't mention it and say, God damn it, I'm really freaking excited for it, then I'd be doing a disservice to myself. But another game, not a game genre that I play, What the Car. That was ridiculous. When that trailer came up, and this goofy car with legs, and you're like rolling because there's legs out like a spoke on a wheel, and like flopping, and like they're oversized. You can dive underneath, you wear a little hat, and you can soar above. It just looked goofy. What the Car. Yeah, it looked goofy, it looked fun. Not a game that I would normally get or play or put a bunch of hours into, but watching that trailer made me laugh. It made me smile. I went, this is ridiculous. I'm going to write this down, and maybe someday when I'm, I'm in desperate need of a game and it's on sale, I'll pick this up and just have a wacky time. Because it just looked wacky and fun. And I've been playing big games, big games that I put lots of time into. Something small that makes you laugh and go, what the hell's going on here? Oh, my God. Woo! It tickled my fancy. It did the thing. The last thing that I'll mention for myself, anyway, was uh, the Dead Cells introduction into Risk of Rain 2. And, you know, we never played Risk of Rain 2. It was always one me and you talked about back and forth in the old days of maybe sparking up a game and, and seeing if we could uh, dig it and get a you know get it into a Borderlands-type game. But we never did. And so I just sit here on the sidelines watching it go along, you know, receiving all sorts of praise. Had a great, you know, run. Used to be real big on Twitch for such a long time. Still quite a few people playing it. And now they're getting some Dead Cell stuff in there, of course, which you both all know. Me and Matt both enjoyed Dead Cells. Me... Never beaten it. Matt, did you ever do anything with it at all? I don't think I've ever even played it, actually. <laughs> no? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. Well, at least I played it. But never beat it because it's a, it's a roguelike and, you know, me. Just don't uh, ever get through all of them. But I appreciate it. I appreciate Dead Cells sticking around, being such a big thing, Risk of Rain 2, handling business, being out there. Two titles that I wish I could love and want to love, but uh, maybe you do. I just, you know, I suck, I guess. Last two for me. First one, it's just more of a kind of an interesting thing, I guess. I'm not sure that I would like it or play it that much. But Mouse, obviously everybody knows just recently the Steamboat Willie IP went into public domain. This is like Steamboat Willie plus Angerfoot, which did get me excited because if they make it silly and not like, I mean, obviously it's kind of brutal because you're blowing heads off and stuff. But if they make it more like over the top goofy, like running around, like 
you got like a grappling hook, you're swinging around and you're just booting enemies, just booting them across the screen. It looks like it could be fun or it could just be a capitalization on the IP and who knows, but the trailer was pretty decent. And then they closed off the show with the rogue Prince of Persia, where you're playing as an older Prince of Persia, swinging and fighting and jumping and dipping and dodging. But what I loved about it was the style of the animation as he was flipping and dodging and like ducking and sliding. It felt like my friend Pedro, when I played that for, you know, a, f- a few days, you know, over maybe five or 10 hours where you like, you'd hit an enemy, but then like ballet jump over him, not like a ballet jump, but like slow motion flipping over him to duck behind him to hit these other enemies to then when the other guy has his big tail and he's about to throw a spear, you slide under and it kind of slows down and just balletic, you know, kind of bullet time platforming and fighting action. And just the, the animation looks so smooth. Very cool, very stylish, very fun. And that was pretty much it for the Triple I Initiative. And I can't believe you didn't mention it, Eric. Because I got something else for mentioning, I can tell you that. Okay, you can mention it. See if you got it. See if you found it. All right. You can go check out both those shows for free. All right. But you know what else is out there for free, Matt? Free games, baby. You get free games. You want free games, huh? Who wants free games? Matt shaking his head. He's like, that's not what I wanted you to find, Eric. That, that's not what I wanted you to find. That's not, not the, the intro that we're going to do. The, the honks. <laughs> that's not what we're going to do. <laughs> all right. So listen, Matt's going to edit this. All right. And I had all sorts of some fun things, and Matt's going to apparently do something different. So whenever you hear that, I had some cool stuff, too. He got rid of it. He's a sucker. He's a sucker. There's free games out there. We're starting this up. And this week... Pretty simple. We'll get in there. We're going to start digging deep. I'm sure there's games we don't even know about that are free, but a couple of them for you. Go on over to Epic. It's free. Just sign up. And right now, as we speak, you can get the Big Con and Town of Salem Part 2. And you say, I don't know those games. Well, neither do I. But they're free, and you can go grab them. A game you might know, though, but you missed it because you weren't on there, was Ghost Runner. That game was free until yesterday, and that would have been a bad Mamba Jamba game for you to get. So I encourage you, highly encourage you to get on the Epic, sign up, and handle yourself getting these free games because, well, someday the apocalypse might happen. You ain't got money no more. And I can tell you right now, I've got bajillions of free games in my libraries. I'll never run out. And I'm going to tell you, too, the devoted and devout listeners of me on this podcast – you know about the Big Con because it was a release like two years ago. This is that <laughs> you're like a 90s high schooler who's trying to save her family's video store. You're on a pickpocketing journey across America, conning people and scrounging up money. And it looks like one of those MTV cartoons come to life, that thick, you know, outline style. I was just watching the trailer as I tried to add it to my library, but I already had it in my library. Just looks like a lot of fun. So go check that out. Also over on Amazon. There's too many games. There's like a million games. There's a billion of them. But Chivalry 2. People were loving Chivalry when that first came out. That's that medieval melee combat game where you're just hordes and hordes of dudes and you're just swinging big old broadswords and axes and big old war hammers at each other, just having a weird, wacky, good time. Obviously, everyone loved the first one. I feel like the second one didn't get as much buzz, but it was way bigger. Like, you had more people, you had more objectives, you had more stuff to do. I added it happily to my library. You should do it, too. While you're doing that, also on Amazon Prime, you can get Fallout 76 if you have the Xbox or PC. You can pick it up through Amazon Prime and check it out free of charge. I've heard they've made a ton of updates that make Fallout 76 actually really fun. And to verify that, you can go on to Twitch and you can see all sorts of content creators playing it. So it must be at least decent because they wouldn't do it if it wasn't getting views, clicks, and having a great time while they're doing it. And Matt said, of course, there's a bunch of other games. I'll just mention a couple. Uh, the Arctic Escape, Fireway 3, Arctic Escape, Drawn, Trail of Shadows, Fairy Tale Detective, Collector's Edition, Dexter Stardust, Adventures in Outer Space, and then there's one other one. Well, there's a couple other ones, but the last one I'll even mention is Demon's Tilt. Because I've heard of Demon's Tilt somewhere in my brain. I've heard of it and actually was interested in checking it out. It sounds like a pinball game. I think it is a pinball game. So... There you go. All these games free on Amazon Prime. All you got to do is pay Amazon lots of money and you'll have those games. Wait a minute. (laughs) But you're already doing it anyway because you're watching the Fallout series, commercial free or commercial plus. So go in, get them, get them for free. And then, hey, since you have Amazon Prime, that means you have Twitch Prime, which means you can subscribe to us on Twitch for free, getting that free dollar dollar bucks and then helping me and Eric 
pump up the show, pump up each other, getting that PayPal split like we just did this morning. I did it this morning. Hooray! It's oh, a great day for looked. everybody. Wow! Hooray! And speaking of hooray, a great day for everybody. We already closed off the Triple I initiative, but you forgot one thing, Eric. Oh, no, what did I miss? I can't believe you didn't even notice because you always talk about it on this goddamn show, and I always cut it out. I bleep mm-hmm. it sometimes because I'm so sick of hearing about it. Well, you, you didn't mention Breath of Fire. Breath of Fire was in there. I didn't see it. Yeah, you missed what, it. What the hell did I miss? Right at the end. Breath of Fire. Uh, you know why? Because as it got to about 44 and some change minutes, I was running out of time. So I started doing like the, I think this is the next game. Click like the it. Scrape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went, watch, watch, watch. Okay, this is a stupid game I don't care about. Then I did the scrape. Because the scrape doesn't have what the game is. It just says, for precise speed things, click mm-hmm. the button. You know. And then I went to the next image that I could see clearly it was something different. And I clicked it. So I, it must have been in between. Because I caught the Prince of Persia and I caught like that chivalry type like weird game in between and one other one. Yeah, I think it was right by the end. I saw the words right there on the screen, Breath of Fire. And I went, damn, Eric's going to be no so way. happy. No way. Yeah. It's impossible. Yes There's way. no way. Yes way, Ted. No, you're tricking me. You're tricking me. It's some kind of fake Breath of Fire. It's fake. The words were right on the screen. It was uh, during the recap at the end. They were ramping it up, and it said Breath of Fire. It was an ability that somebody used in Darkest Dungeon 2. They went Breath of Fire, and it went, Whoa. and I went, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Yes, that's the yep, yep, yep. Shake See, your head. Know, you Shake know, your just, head you know, and get a just, frowny face on. Yes, I mean, that's exactly what game. I wanted. It wouldn't be an indie game, but you know. Yeah, you know fire. what? Maybe they sold it. Capcom could do no right with the Breath of Fire franchise, so they sold yes, it they off. Yes, they can do right. You shut your little mouth. <laughs> Maybe Gearbox Publishing. They got one last rep, rep around. But Stop it. I got you for half a second, and that's good enough for me. But what about you out there in podcast listening land? Was this episode good enough for you? Was this good enough comeback episode? It's a little longer than a usual episode, and I apologize for making you wait for it but if you think this episode was great if you think it sucked well don't say it if it sucked let us know that via the email thirdshiftmegmail.com on the twitter machine at thirdshiftme find us on facebook on the third shift head the discord the patreon the podcast home get on the pod beans don't at home did it once you can do it too get on the twitch i'll probably be streaming if the house is quiet i'll be streaming up a crazy storm this weekend, Friday, Saturday. Now I say that, the house will be crazy noisy and there'll be like running saws and stuff and it won't work. But check us out there. Check us out anywhere. We love you. We're, you're awesome and we're great. You can check us out anywhere. And you know what? It's going to be hard to find us because I'm flying around doing my thing like Kanye West. You know what I'm saying? You can't locate me. Just delete that from the show. It's not going to I don't understand the <laughs> reference. I don't watch the news. I don't know nothing. <laughs> you can do all those things. Or, just as Matt said, you can head over on to Patreon, little old tip jar sitting there, like what we're doing, want to boost the morale, get us rocking and rolling, buying us cool new levers and devices to do the show with. <laughs> that's what we'll do with it, all right? And we'll make the show the best show we can, because that's what we do. We have a lot of fun doing what we do, and we appreciate all of you who support us in the past, present, and future, but if you can't throw money... You can throw praise. You can throw five-star ratings, mailbag questions, just general conversation over on Discord. Whatever it is, you can do those things and interact and have a lot of fun. We appreciate all that very much as well. So it's up to you. You pick it. We're just here to enjoy it. Absolutely. And, of course, we're also here to enjoy you listening to the very next episode, which will be dropping on, not around, it'll be dropping on, the 24th, because like I told you, Eric, it's got to be a Wednesday show. we got to record it early, yes. but you can still find it on iTunes and Stitcher on Podbean and Spotify and on YouTube. And as I always say, hey, if you like what we're doing, hey, you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any of those good services because it does help us out. And we really do appreciate it. Yeah. We do appreciate it very much. Just like we appreciate the five-star reviews. Um, you know, what could I say? Uh, you know what? I get a five-star review. Put your address in there. I'll send you a bag of combos. All right, bag of combos for a five star review. You just got to put your address in there, and I'll send you a bag of combos. That's a pretty good deal. That's way more than five combos. You know, for five stars, more than five combos, you're getting a bag of combos. That's that's pretty nice. What else? I mean, what else you want from me? Uh, maybe a water bottle too, or just a, a water, ice mountain. Is that good enough? Or has it got to be smart water? I don't know. Dude, I'm going to go submit a review. I want some Yeah, combos. I know you. I want some seven-layer combos. combos and a smart water. Oh, baby, that's good. That's a Friday night right there, right? That's right. You know, all for a five-star review. 
Plus, that means instead of sitting at home tomorrow, you got to drive your happy ass out here and put it on my porch and go, God, I had to go into town. What'd you have to go into town for? Never mind, babes. Doesn't Leave matter. me alone. I'm going outstairs Can't talk now. About it. That's right. It's party time. I'm not just going to forget this happened. But you can do that, and we would appreciate it. So just consider it, especially going in the summer months, you know, brighten our day. Just like the sun brightens yours. Absolutely. With that, there's nothing else to say, but don't forget to say. Shut up and sit down.